Good evening, everybody. Was down in Florida for the weekend to see the big car show there on Amelia Island. It was great. Got back to Pittsburgh, and the weather was just about the same up here as it was down there. I think it went up into the 70s today. But just like Pittsburgh weather, they're expecting another snowstorm to come through any time. Oh, I didn't get anything, Paul. The sad, uh, sad reality of a show like that is... There was probably about 300 cars there, and I would guess that every single one of them was probably worth more than all 25 of my cars put together. There's some fantastic cars. So, but it did inspire me to think, well, there's ways to make big money out there, so let's figure out how to do it. <clears throat> So we'll do that in the market. And as we can see, this is, uh, again, our advantage of seeing what's happening in a trend based upon all the uh, criteria that we look for when we do our visual analysis, which is, number one, they couldn't close below the T-line. Yeah, go to Cuba. There's tons of 50s and 60s cars there. Um, and we can see the patterns. So if we know what a signal is telling us, and we know what should happen after a signal, like we saw on Friday, bullish confirmation of a doji, then the bullish confirmation that we're in an uptrend based upon the fact that the 200-day moving average was not going to act as resistance, and that being additionally confirmed today so far, they use the 200 as support, so if we wake up tomorrow and the pre-market futures are still positive, that's telling us the uh, the uh, market uh, trend is still in progress. Right now we can see, again, indecisive trading when it came back to the T-line. Wouldn't really close below the T-line. Right there was a little area we needed to see what it would do the next day, which was obviously it had to open positive and trade positive, which it did. Got soggy again, but notice where it closed, right smack dab on the T-line. Then the kicker type signal. I say kicker type signal. The fact that they gapped it up above the previous day's open and went positive is usually a good bullish sign. Now, I wouldn't classify that as a kicker signal because what do we want to see as far as uh, kicker signal formations? We want to see a big confirming down day followed by a big confirming up day. This was pretty much kind of a spinning top in the size of trading day, but it still represented the same thing visually, that they opened here and closed here and then kicked it in the opposite direction. And the more important factor was that the support on the T-line was now showing that we probably had a J-hook pattern in progress. So being able to identify what each individual signal is telling us and add that to the analysis of what, what pattern we're looking at, just kind of helps provide more confidence uh, that the trend is probably still going to move in our in the in the right direction, which kind of alleviates fears of most investors. Say, man, this market's been up, going up, going up, going up. It's time to get out of this market, and that's the exact wrong way to analyze a market trend. We want to see what the trend is doing. Because for all we know, this might be in an uptrend for another three months. Just because it was up for a while doesn't necessarily mean that's the end of that, that uptrend. Some of the influences on the market, uh, we can see what's happening in crude oil. Crude oil has had a nice, I guess we better make it smaller. You can see kind of a double bottom, fry pan bottom, and the fact that they haven't been able to close it below the T-line, even though we're in the overbought area, still has that one basic criteria. As long as it stays above the T-line, doesn't close below the T-line, we're still in an uptrend. The only thing that I can see that has a real solid chart to it 
is one that I just tried to pull up. Cocoa. You see the big fry pan bottom in cocoa, and you can see what it does back at the T-line every day. It uses the T-line as, as support. And the importance of that is that probably, as we know, very, very few people have the T-line on their chart. So this is, this is just kind of our natural support level, a human nature support level. Oh, uh, what else do we got over in this area? Oh, cattle has been moving up. That's crude oil. G-L-E-J-6. Cattle's been moving up. It kind of did the potential bobble. So this will be important to see how they open this tomorrow. If it opens lower, we're closing out long positions. If it's open higher and comes back up through the 200, we're adding positions because that tells us wave one, wave two, wave three should bring us at least up in this area telling us the 200 is not going to act as resistance. In the grains, everything's kind of wobbly except we can see what's happened on uh, soybeans over the last couple of days. After that big move to the upside, where was our potential target? Kind of the resistance level right in here. Well, went through that. Notice what happened today. Even if you drew this line here to see where the resistance level, it's obvious that they use that same exact level as support. Still could be buying with the anticipation that the next target is going to be the 200-day moving average. Uh, let's see. Cotton is something that probably be, uh, needs to be addressed tomorrow. You had your kind of your little double bottom down here with hammer signals, bullish engulfing. Now you've broken this down from the channel. Where's your next target? Up here at the uh, 50. And I'm writing this one down just in case I wake up in a drunken stupor tomorrow and forget. All right, now the interest rates aren't doing anything that would get anybody uh, out of whack. Um, the bond prices are, are falling, so interest rates are coming up a little bit, but not with any great magnitude. But look where we are. We're down here in the oversold area, and this is kind of where, where uh, you want to observe the obvious. And the obvious was where was the, the uh, top? of this uptrend up here at the shooting star. Where would you have taken profits? Flip to your 10-minute chart when it was that far away in the overbought condition, that far away from the T-line. Uh, start taking profits on your 10-minute chart. And if it pulls back, where do you think it was going to pull back to in this area? And there was really nothing that told us this, this might have been a day where you would have been buying based on a J-hook type pattern, but you would have been out of it the next uh, couple days with it closing back below the T-line. So somebody said it was he's saying, well, isn't this a kind of an unprofitable trade? The trade is based on knowing what the next chart pattern is going to do. So a risk-reward factor would have been that if this is wave one, this was wave three, whoops, somebody... Uh, this would have been a good risk reward. So if you were buying right here when it broke out, you had very good profits. You got out up here, you got had very good profits. This was just your risk reward of getting back into the next trade. And if it didn't work, all right, you lost a little bit of money. But we are looking for another move like this. Uh, on Coco, for example, the price whipped around below and above the T-line back in February. Do you use anything to filter out that action so you don't get stuck trading every swing on Coco? Back in, in here, yes, there's a very easy thing to do. 
If you're buying and the next day it closes back below the T line, you're back out. If you're buying and it closes back below the T line, what's it telling you? It's telling you there's no trend. Get back out of the uh, out of this uh, position until you see something that tells you there's more confirmed buying. So there's going to be, and so you're going to see charts like this. Now let's see if I can find charts like this. Uh, this is a little bit more waffly. Um, you can see coffee when it broke through here. That becomes a new dynamic. So uh, I'm trying to find something. I don't know. See if I can find a. Now uh, the closest I'd be able to find is something like this. There's going to be times when you look at a chart and you say, well, what's that chart telling me? Not really telling me much of anything. So if it's not telling you much of anything, you go on. Because then there will always be a time where you can see there's a, a great place to be shorting or a great place to be buying. There's other, going to be other times where it doesn't really tell you anything. And lean hogs, whoops, that's the type of chart you're looking at right now. What's the trend on this one right now? Well, it looked like it could have been breaking out. Then it turned right around. So where are we? We're in the middle of this, this sideways trend. Do we want to be long or short? Probably neither. Um, so... So I wouldn't be even looking at this. And I, I say I wouldn't even be looking at this. If you're trading futures and you can look at a chart and analyze it, you can look, analyze this chart in the matter of two seconds. It's visually. There's no, it's not going anywhere. Go on to the next chart. There's always going to be a chart out there somewhere that uh, tells you there's a, at least a, a trendable opportunity. So right now, I'd be looking at something like this, where we've had a wave one, a wave two. Did a little bullish harami today in the oversold area. So I'd be watching to see if they break this downtrending channel and the moving averages. If it does, now I know I've got the possibility of a, a, a trend. At this stage in here, if I got in and got back out, that was telling me there was no trend to it. So this is not rocket science. This is just visually seeing, is there a trend? Is there a trend starting based on a candlestick signal? Uh, let's see. Gold. We can see what was happening. And I don't know why this line is on here. We're seeing that what was happening. That we were in a slow uptrend. It pulled back, broke that uptrend. It's trading right here right now, which is pretty close to the bottom of this trend channel, but things are rolling over. So if you were trading gold, obviously you would have been out of it. Uh, this is today's trading, and this is after hours. And I think it actually closed down here. Um, but on the, uh, the uh, actual trading day versus the electronic trading, it actually closed up here on the uh, actual trading day. But so now we watch this to see if it starts coming back up because that would pretty much tell us we've got a trend channel in progress. Even though it was trading below the T-line, it's telling us there is no rampant move like we saw here, telling us it's probably just a slow, steady uptrend for a while. So we can analyze what a chart is telling us based upon if there's trend channels, if you're seeing buy signals at the bottom of a, uh, a trend channel, a J-hook pattern may be forming. Uh, yeah, but not yet. We'll get to the J-hooks here in a second, Kevin. Okay, so some of the uh, charts that still look uh, fairly attractive is things like PAH, P-A-H. Did the little bobble here at the 50, whoops. You can stay long on this 
fry pan bottom pattern as long as it doesn't close below the T-line. Scotty the other day gapped up somewhere. Oh, right here. You can see it already had bottomed out. More than likely, you're still in an uptrend as long as it stays above the T-line. And OT, O-U-T-R, another one that was doing everything, telling us, let me make this bigger, that the uptrend remained in progress as long as they really didn't close it below the T-line. There was a day right there that would have scared me out had it opened here and traded down. But notice when it opened, they immediately started showing green. Yep, that's what I was getting to, Laurie, is right now, uh, OUTR right now is trading up in this range somewhere. Apparently, they announced something. But that's just kind of confirmation that you stay long as long as you don't see it close below the T-line. Another kind of steady eddy was NTAP. You just stay long until you see a sell signal and a close below the T-line. Uh, exploring possible sale. All right. Well, that's what we were hoping for on Lexmart, which had a nice J-hook pattern. We were going to be buying aggressively again if it had opened positive and came up through the 200, which it didn't do today. So that doesn't bode well for this stock. So without closing it today, it has to open positive. If it opens lower, they're probably bringing it back down to the 50. Can you comment on where to put stops well in an uptrend above the T-line? Uh, yes. I'll, I'll do that, Willie, as I go through some of these. All right, the biggies, such as Amazon. You can see the pattern. You can see the bobble. So for those that like to trade Amazon, especially the options, if you can identify a pattern and you, uh, yeah, Lexmark keeps saying that they want to be bought out because they think the value of the company is way undervalued as far as the market is assessing them. So I think they've aggressively gone out to find somebody they could sell the company to at the appropriate price and or pieces of the uh, company. So that's in, I, that's in progress and we're in process right now. And supposedly we're going to hear something within the next couple of weeks, which unfortunately kills the, uh, this Friday's uh, option. But Amazon, as you can see, is in the bobble. So if it opens positive, we can assess pretty much where the next price move will be. If this is wave one, Wave three could be all the way up here, which is essentially filling that gap up at that level. And Netflix, not anything of wild excitement in here. You can see they failed when they got to the 50, but you can see they also didn't really close below the T-line. This makes for a very easy trade. If we wake up tomorrow and the pre-market futures are showing the Dow's going to be up 100 points, and Netflix is opening positive, you can pretty much calculate that your next move is up to the 200-day uh, the moving average. Apple, kind of doing that classic fry pan bottom J-hook pattern. So this is the reason that you can get a much more clear assessment of what's happening in a price move. Notice what happened to Apple over the last four or five days. Just indecisive trading above the T-line. Now they've started it back up. That pretty much tells us they, when they started selling, they weren't selling with any great enthusiasm. And when that selling was over, the buying has come back in. If that's wave one, wave three should take you all the way up here in the uh, 108, 110 level. Uh, Kevin, if which ones were we looking at? Wave one, wave two, wave three. I forget. Is it Amazon? 
we know a J-hook pattern has a very simple rule. That, and we're not using Elliott wave. We're just using waves. That if this is wave one of a J-hook pattern, and this pullback is considered wave two, when the next wave up starts, we know that wave one and wave three are using the same magnitude. So this becomes wave one, wave two, wave three. In this case, it was wave one, wave two, wave three. Now, does that mean anything as far as Elliott wave? Absolutely not. If this moved up here and started pulling back indecisively, then this would be wave one wave two, expecting wave three. And the reason we're uh, uh, counting them as just wave one, wave two, wave three versus Elliott wave four, five, six, seven, ABC retracement, we're not going to hang on to a position that long. If I was buying Amazon, it might be for two weeks. It may only be for two days. We're not going to be holding on to this one for four months anticipating wave one, wave two, wave three, et cetera. We're, we're looking to buy when it's time to buy and sell when it's time to sell and buy back when it's time to buy. Okay, the, uh, the gold's backing off. Things like SA, which was doing extremely well, now we have to make sure, <coughs> excuse me, that this is going to open positive and trade positive. So that could be setting up for a wave two going into wave three. Same scenario with AU. To stay long on this one tomorrow, it has to open positive. All the oils, uh, or not all the oils, all the golds backed off. So that brought Nugget back down. But as you can see, Nugget is still kind of in this trend channel, which means it has to open positive and tra trade positive. If it opens lower, now we have another assessment that this is wave one. Wave two is probably coming back to the moving averages and then see whether it starts wave three from there. Uh, so uh, back to Willie's question. If you're way above the T-line or above the T-line, where do you set your stops? So ETU is a very good uh, setup. Had the, the fry pan bottom cradle pattern. Doji sandwich, doji sandwich. Then what did we see? We saw, saw a shooting star. And notice what happened here on the shooting star signal. The high of the shooting star before the selling started again wasn't quite as high as the uh, previous day's high. So that was already a clue that we were running out of steam. So that made it very simple. Notice how far away you are from the T-line. So what's our simple rule of a doji slash shooting, shooting star? If it opens lower, close out the position immediately. That's not what should be happening, especially if you're in the overbought area and you see a candlestick sell signal. So this goes right back to the very, uh, um, very basic bricks and mortar of candlestick analysis. If you see a shooting star, which is one of the major signals in the overbought condition, there's a very simple rule. If it opens lower the next day, you start taking your profits or get out of the position. We've added the fact that if it's that far away from the T-line and it opens lower after a sell signal, we know pretty much where it's going to head back to, at least back to that level. Is it going to bounce off of there? Have no idea. Why take the risk? Close out the position because we know what the probabilities are. You can always see about buying it back once it gets down here. Um, let's see. If you had been short DDD via its open position in relation to the T-line, would you have been out today? I'll just skip to that. Yes. Yes, because you can see what, again, look what your pattern setup was. This is why you want to be, be aware of what to be looking for. For example, big fry pan bottom failed at the uh, 200 with what? A doji shooting star. 
Where'd they take it back? Well, they failed here at the T-line, did another doji, which would have told us that if they opened a positive from there, more than likely they were going to start bringing it back up as your bobble. The fact that they gapped it up told you immediately close out the position. Uh, and this is one we'll look at here in a few minutes again on the bullish side. Um, so anyway, let me uh, let, let me flip through a few that are good looking charts still, or not still, still still. There's your classic fry pan bottom J hook pattern on KPTI. So what's our next target? Right up in this range, somewhere in the $12 range, up another 30%, uh, just because of this right here. There's your morning star signal, smack dab off the 50 and the T line. So again, if this is wave one, wave three should bring you up in, in this range somewhere. Uh, whiting was one of the oils that didn't back off very much today. It opened lower. And it traded indecisively most of the day. So somebody asked earlier today, was it time to get out of whiting? But at the time, whiting had opened, flipped down real quick, and was now trading back up to where it opened. So it was shown an indecisive day. So we're in an indecisive day on a potential sell signal. The answer at that point was, let's wait and see, because what was the underlying criteria of this move. It's still above the T line. And if they are starting to buy back at where they opened it, or back up to where they opened it and started trading positive from there, what's that overall tell us about the buyers are selling in that, that day? Even though it was down, it was they were buying since they opened it. So there's still some strength there. So at this point you just stay long on this one until you see a sell signal and a close back below the T-line. Oh, let's see. U.S. Steel is one that people have been watching. Now, again, a very simple analysis of what's going on here. First of all, it broke out through this level with a slow curve. Doji sandwich type setup. Where was the next target? The 200-day moving average. Failed at the 200-day moving average with a shooting star, spinning top, gap down, that probably told you it was time to take profits. Where do you think it was moving back to, at least the T-line? Now, was it going to do a bobble? Had no idea. It could have come all the way back down here. Close out the position. I'd have been buying it back on this day, yesterday, Friday. Because what did it tell us? It told us the bobble was in progress. Uh, here's another good-looking chart, which will probably be on the recommended list tonight. XONE. Same scenario. Big fry pan bottom. And I think this was, well, was even a piercing signal. This one you can buy in positive trading. Again, because if this is wave one, which was approximately five points, this should take you up into the $16 to $17 area. Earnings tomorrow. All right. Thank you for that. I will, you know, if it's tomorrow afternoon. A bobble. A bobble is when they bring it up to a resistance level, and then you can see how they bobble it around, They do, and they use the T-line as a support. This wouldn't be as clean a bobble, but you can see what happened after a while. You had a bullish engulfing signal. Then they came back up through the, the resistance. So, when it hit the resistance, it bobbled. And when it went through the resistance, that's when everybody started jumping in. After the market tomorrow, okay. Uh, LPSN. This is what we call kind of the slow curve. You can see how it's starting to slow curve break out, I'd still be a buyer of this one, expecting a lot more slingshot effect uh, tomorrow or next few days. Yeah, there's kind of a bobble right there where Valero came up, failed at the moving averages, the resistance level, 
And why is this a resistance level? Because everybody and their brother is watching to see whether it's going to get through the 200 and or the 50, and it didn't. We have the capability of seeing whether they were actually selling it off or they just pulled it back, profit taking when you got to that level. And there was our doji, inverted hammer, both indecisive trading days, and then they brought it back up through this level. So you could still be a buyer of this one, especially if it came up through today's high, that would tell us this uptrending channel is still in progress. Um, uh, do you know what scanner works? Uh, Joseph, the, uh, all our formulas are over at Thinkorswim and uh, TradeStation. Uh, I usually use Metastock or Warden Brothers. It doesn't really matter which ones you use. It's just whatever is most convenient for, for you to use. So I often get asked, what? Uh, well, back there, it seems like the fry pan bottom is your, uh, your favorite pattern. No, there's no pattern that's a favorite. It's when things are working at the appropriate time. For example, this is uh, H. MIX, kind of your classic, and the J-hook pattern right now is in effect. I'd still be a buyer of this one on the basis that if this pat or if this move right here was four points, they're going to take this up into the $14.50, $15 range. Okay, thank you, uh, Joe. That's why we recommended WRK today. There's that classic fry pan bottom followed by a J-hook pattern. And what could we identify in the J-hook pattern? They couldn't really get it below the T-line, and they brought it back up again. This would still be a buy on positive trading tomorrow, because if this is wave one, which is approximately six points, that tells me they should be able to take it up into this area right here. Well, let's see, whatever, whatever time frame you trade, if it closes below the T-line if you're long or above the T-line if you're short, do you get out right then or do you sometimes wait to see if it bounces off the 200 <coughs> off the 20. If I am buying, let me, oh, let me figure out. I'll, I'll answer that, Rich, when I find the, the chart to kind of demonstrate that. There's uh, Juno. There's your bobble. There's your sell signal, failing at the uh, 50, but notice they couldn't close below the T-line. So if I closed right here, I don't mind closing here and buying back here, because what that did was kept me from holding on to something that might be heading back in this direction. I'd rather be closing when it's time to close, and then if they tell me there's new buying coming in, I can always get back in. What happened up here? They came back up to the next resistance level at 200. There's your shooting star. Opens lower the next day. Where do you think they're likely going to take it to? Back here to the T line. Now what's happening? They're having a hard time keeping this below the T line. If you're buying this one, what's your first target? Back up here to the 200. And if it goes through, your bobble pattern breakout is in progress. So to answer somebody's question, a bobble is when they hit a resistance level, they usually pull back to the next moving average, which in our case is usually the T-line. And then when they come back up or they start back up, they're usually going to test that level again. And if they go through, that's our bobble breakout, which is also a J-hook pattern. It's just high probability identification of what usually occurs in human nature. Uh, M KTO, we recommended this one. We closed it out because exactly what we expected. It was going to come back to the uh, T-line. Didn't know whether it was going to head back down and be a wave one, wave two, 
wave three, but right now we can identify that they're holding this level. We'll start looking to buy it on positive trading, just watching to see what it does at the 200. Uh, Juno, would you wait for the stochastics to turn? No, remember the stochastics just tell you where you are in the trend. We're buying the pattern and the signals first. Then stochastics will usually start confirming the pattern. Now, if it opened lower, that told us that we're still in a downtrend and probably maybe drifting all the way back down to the the T-line, but no, um, we're not buying stochastics. We're buying the uh, the signal is the number one criteria. Stochastics are just telling you what's happening in that trend. MTX, observe the obvious. Fry pan bottom, J-hook pattern. You can start buying this one on positive trading. And you can buy aggressively if it comes back up through the 200. J-hook pattern would be in progress. So this is to kind of illustrate, or somebody asked a few weeks ago, is apparently the fry pan bottoms are your most favorite pattern. That's because a couple of weeks ago, fry pan bottoms were all setting up very nicely. Now a lot of fry pan bottoms are setting up little J-hook patterns. So we bought KND. I back here and we're just going to kind of hang on to it as long as it stays above the T-line. Uh, DDD, when we looked at it earlier, there's your perfect bobble pattern. Failure, pull back, now what's, what's this signal right here? That's your best friend. And what's your best friend usually imply? There's going to be a lot more upside, which means wave one, wave two, Best friend starting wave three, which means there's going to be more upside. You can pretty much calculate. There's probably a good six, eight points more uh, to this one. You're probably going to see that one recommended tomorrow. As well as NIHD. Fry pan bottom. J-hook pattern. And notice what they couldn't do. I mean, this, this is not magic. If you, if I mean, people are not buying and selling this stock because it's trading at the T line, because there's such a minis, minuscule percentage. I mean, minuscule, minuscule percentage of people in the world with the eight exponential moving average on their chart. This is just the natural support and resistance level. And notice what they couldn't do. They couldn't close this back below the T line getting ready for the next setup of a, another J-hook pattern. Let's see, KNDI, there's your slow curve, there's your breakout. There's going to be more upside. There's your first gap to fill. You want to be buying this one based on, anytime you see a slow curve, the breakout is usually pretty strong. Uh, Joe, you're usually identifying what the pattern is doing based upon what each little individual signal is doing. In this case, we could see it was trading indecisively until we came to this little, make this big enough where we can see it, kind of a little uh, hammer harami followed by a gap up. So that told me ah, there's some buying here. And look what I can see. I can see the pattern that's setting up. So. The signal pretty much tells you what could be the results of the pattern. Sometimes you're going to see a signal and there's really no pattern, like here. But this even becomes more credible when you see a little signal and you can see the pattern also setting up. Oh. I'm guessing that's what you were looking for. And IHD, pretty much where you can see it started its downtrend and came right back up again. So the whole thing, so if I was looking at this, where was it starting to trade in a slow curve? Right about in here. Okay, let's see, what? Uh, 
uh, sorry, every time I look at Watt, think of the little rascals trying to give direction over to Watt Street. With that conversation, Watt Street, yes, Watt Street, Watt Street, which was also on uh, Abbott and Costello the other night. So here's wave one, here's wave two, there's your gap up going into wave three. And LPSN, there's your slow curve breakout. And remember, where do most people sell? They panic sell at the bottom. That's why you always start looking for buy signals. So that buy signal down here was that hammer type signal. Where do you think your first target was? Up here to the uh, T line. So even if it got up here and failed, eh, you still made a little bit of a profit. Then when it came back up, you could see what was kind of happening. It was starting to get that slow uptrend. But here's where it became most effective. And you can see that slow curve. When it closed right here on a slow curve right here in the 50, one of your highest probability trades of not only moving in the right direction, but having a good size breakout is if it opened positive after this little slow curve, everybody and their brother who's watching to see what's happening at the 50-day moving average say, no, if they've broken through, I think I'll start buying. And they're usually the ones helping you once you get in on that open, or if you had bought in here somewhere, that's just that. That's what you're expecting is people to start piling in once they see the 50-day moving average is not going to act as resistance anymore. Same scenario on Flamel, kind of a slow curve. You can see where they had kind of a flutter kicker to the upside and then gapped up. When they gap up into a resistance level, that probably gives you a good impression immediately that that resistance level is not going to act as resistance. If they're gapping up going toward it, it means they're probably going to go through. This one uh, has still got some good upside. Let me make this a little bit smaller. So you've got a gap right here to fill, and there's a wee little teeny gap right up here to fill. So more upside. EPZM, there's your fry pan, and where did it break out? Right about where it started getting pretty choppy and broke out through the 50. Makes this one very simple. If it opens positive tomorrow, you can buy immediately. There's your first target, which probably gets you close enough that they'll take it to the 200. Sage, another fry pan bottom, right smack dab. At the breakout level, you can buy this one on positive trading tomorrow. On gaps, are wicks taken into account? Yeah, usually you don't want to see a, uh, yeah, the gap right here is including the fact that the wicks didn't cross or the gaps right here. So this isn't a gap, and that's not a good example. Yeah. If the uh, wicks cross, yeah, they, that's technically not a gap. A gap is where you can see white space between the previous day's trading. RWLK, kind of pretty well can calculate where your next target might be, the top of this channel. And why? Because you've got a big left-right combo piercing or a belt hold type signal. So I'd be a buyer. You just watch to see what it does here. Then you see if when it gets up here what it does at that point. Oh, I, we'll do the individual ones later. But uh, FCX, all you can do right now is stay long on this one, kind of a little J-hook pattern. Um, did I do just, I forget what I just did, RWLK. Yes, did that one. A L N Y. Another slow curve. We're right at a breakout point. You can start looking at this one as a buy. And there's just a couple. 
There's your kicker signal to the downside. Now this is a, a kind of a true kicker signal. When this candle's relatively substantial, and then this signal is relatively, or this candle is relatively substantial. So it's not like you've had a reversal with a doji, because if this was a doji gap down, that'd be a different uh, signal. Sage again. If it opens positive, kind of figure your fry pan bottom's breaking out. There's a little gap right here, and there's another gap up here at the 200. GB, another kicker type signal. An uptrend, they gapped it down. Even though the tail came up here, they still gapped it down, still making it a viable trade to the downside, which means you're probably looking at a downward trend channel even at this level. You could draw kind of a parallel line taking you down into this area. And AFSI, same scenario. Kicker type signal. This one you'd be looking more at a wave one, a wave two. Here's your first target. So you know you at least got a little bit of running room on the short side if you short it. Then if you break through here, you know that this wave and this wave are going to be about the same. Okay, so that's about all I've got for tonight, let's see, there was a couple again. I think DDD, you want to take a, a strong look at this one, a good bobble breakout. And we uh, recommended HIMX last week as it started up, and we recommended it again today on a positive trading. How do you define trend channel with gold? Oh, uh, just very sloppy that you might have a trend channel right here where you can kind of draw a line through the bottoms and through the tops. And the reason that has the element of having a trend channel is because look what happened here. Your big fry pan bottom, your J hook pattern. So you, unless they can really break this down if they start breaking it down, that means they could bring it back to the 50, which would also coincide with this that uh, resistance level. Let's see what's silver. Now, silver has a harder chart. Let me see if I can find another month. Now, silver, as you can see, came out of this big fry pan bottom. But it's in a whipsaw mode. Nothing right now that can make for great trading. So I'm watching gold. I've come out of gold. We were basically stopped out. But I'll see if they do something like a J-hook pattern to continue the uptrend. Did I do AFSI? Yes. OK. All right. So is there any uh, any general questions on candlesticks or did, is there something I missed along the way as we were going through this tonight? All right, if not, Jim, go ahead and do the double line. And in 3.6 seconds, do the next double line. Microsoft, I just don't trade this one because it's too slow. So right now, you can see how it's kind of traded very slow in channels, and it's in that same type of channel right now. If you like it, you can stay long. It's just not a very lucrative one to trade. And GWPH, I guess they had one of their uh, products approved. So that was up basically 100% on the day. Uh, at this point, if you own it, you should be happier than a pig in doo-doo. If you're looking to buy it, you buy it on positive trading and just use today's low as your stop. The 
Carlisle Group. Another little J-hook pattern. You can buy this one on positive trading with at least the uh, the 45 degree being the, the major analysis. ADXS, another J-hook pattern that can be bought on positive trading tomorrow. Good looking chart. STX, all you can do with this one, as long as it stays above the T-line, you stay with it. At this point, I'd put a sell stop at today's low. It shouldn't come back down through that level. If it does, you can see they've kind of fizzled out. Hertz, you just stay long. Same scenario. Use the T-line as your stop. If it comes back through there, things have fizzled out. I don't know why this happens. YRD. And sometimes this comes up and sometimes it does. I don't know why it does that on this chart, Elsie. VTL. Oh, VTL. You can stay long on this one. It's just not very uh, volatile right now. If I was trading it, I would rather buy it at 975, knowing that it broke out through this resistance level. AMAT, you stay long, but very simple. You've got a bearish uh, Harami Doji. If it opens lower, especially trades back below today's low, you close it out because that means they're coming back to test the uh, T line. Then the worst case scenario is even if it doesn't, comes down and starts trading back up, you put your buy stop above today's high, this little resistance level. That tells you the profit taking is over and they're, they're moving it up again. Nice J-hook pattern. I would suspect more upside on this one. Good looking chart. CAR had positive trading. It had a kind of a kicker signal. Notice it opened at the positive end or uh, at the uh, same area that opened the other day or on Thursday, traded down. Friday kind of gapped up and traded up. So I would not be long or short this one right now. You should be out of this one because there's nothing there to give you any advantage of knowing which way it's going. Whoops, hang on for one second. Sorry about that. After being up nice and sunny and warm today, it's gotten a little bit nippy. I had to close the door. Okay, so that's a good looking chart. Uh, I wouldn't be afraid to be uh, trading that. Just make sure your uh, volume is good. Whoops. That one has a good prospect of going up to the, uh, see your fry pan bottom J hook, going all the way up to the 200. BV. Same scenario. That's a good-looking chart also. Make sure your volume is good. TMST, getting there. I wouldn't be doing anything long or short with this one right now. If you like this, you put a buy stop here at, uh, let's say, 
875. If it comes up through there, you know your J-hook pattern is starting. So that's why a lot of times you can anticipate what a pattern setup will look like and put a stop so you don't have to sit there and wait for it. Put a stop at a level that you know that would be confirming the signal. TKC, just stay long as long as it can't close below or it doesn't close below the T-line. TK, what did I say on the other one? TC, TCK. Another one you can be buying on positive trading tomorrow. Devon Energy. There's your little best friend, Bobble Breakout. You can buy this one on positive trading also. Now this one has the prospect of getting eventually up to here, but there's your first resistance level. There's your second resistance level, still a good 10 and 20% to the upside. Rig, another J-hook type pattern left-right combo. You can buy this one on positive trading tomorrow. Use the T-line as your stop. SN, another one that you want to be buying at this point. I would probably be more apt to be buying above these levels right here and then just be aware of what happens as soon as it gets to the 200-day uh, moving average. <clears throat> ACAD, big fry pan bottom. Really can't trade it because of the fry pan bottom. If you like it, you trade it on positive trading. You just have to be very diligent here at the 50-day moving average. Uh, we did work. You can be still buying this one. Nice J hook. NPTN. This one had the J-hook pattern in progress. You stay long as long as it doesn't close below the T-line. If it closes below the T-line, now you're going to have this downward trend channel in progress. Amdocs, a biggie. Um, again, not very volatile as far as percentage move, but if you like it, you stay long on this one. TK Offshore, you can be buying this one. Nice cup and handle. GameStop, another J hook pattern. Uh, stay long on this. Use the, again, the use the T line as your stop. ATVI, be ready to buy this one especially if it broke out through the 50. Nike. Nike, you can see, is in a wedge formation. If you're buying it, you just be very conscious of what it does once it gets right up to this level, which isn't really a big percentage move, only 5% away. MTRX. This one has to open positive tomorrow and trade positive. If it opens lower, you're still waffling here along the 50-day moving average. UNG, whoops, didn't get anywhere. Nope. UNG. Starting to come back up. Natural gas, there's your inverted hammer, bullish confirmation. Right now you stay long, but I would, I'd, uh, if it opened lower tomorrow, you know it's going to at least come back and test the T-line. Tyson Food, another one where you stay long, but if it opens lower tomorrow, you you want to see it open and start trading positive. Otherwise, it's coming back to test the T-line, which means it's not going to be a real great, powerful chart at that point. Hormel Foods. That must be a buyout because that's absolutely sideways. So all you could do with that one is uh, 
I'd take the money and go on to something else. BRCX, another one where you can stay long. Make sure the volume's big. I think it is on this one. Stay long as long as it stays above the T line. Gas L, they're getting smaller and smaller. Gas L, again, this is why you put your safety stops at the previous day's open. It shouldn't come back down through there. Right now, I wouldn't be long or short this stop. Mankind, this one you get ready to buy on positive trading. Just make sure your volume is hefty. Royal Caribbean, you can buy this one. I wouldn't be too excited about this one until you see a lot of strength. If, if I was buying it, I'd put my buy stop above today's high, looking for a doji sandwich. Then at least you've got the prospect of going up to the 50 or coming up to fill this gap, but that would still only be still only about 8% or so. So I would probably be trading something else. STE. Has to open positive tomorrow and start trading positive. If it opens lower, you're having a hard time getting through these moving averages. Sedge, nothing here. You can see that it's run out of uh, direction You're in a big sideways wedge. I wouldn't be long or short right now. Pantry or Pilgrim's Pride, another one that I would probably be more apt to be going short on weakness tomorrow with the anticipation of bringing it back down to the 50. Again, not a very big percentage move, though. Stamps. This one I'd be more apt to go short on weakness. You can see all the weak signals here. And you're broken back down through where they gapped it up. That tells me they, they got a good possibility coming down to the uh, test of 50 again. AVGO, just stay long. Nothing wrong with there. Nice J-hook pattern. On GNW, make sure your volume is good. You can be a buyer of this one. Builder's first source. Another good-looking little uh, J-hook pattern. Dollar General. Yeah, nice breakout of kind of the wedge formation. Stay long on this one. At this point, you're in the overbought area. I'd use today's low as my stop. It shouldn't come back down through that level. And price line. Another 45 degree. Just stay long as long as it doesn't close below the T line. Got kind of a little J-hook pattern setting up on... Uh, Facebook, you can be buying this one on positive trading. Just don't let it close back below the open of this candle. If it does, you're still stuck in this sideways uh, uh, trend. ALNY, we do this one. You can buy it. Just make sure it gets through the uh, 50. Uh, EXAS, a bobble. You can buy this one on positive trading immediately tomorrow. Tell you there'd be a J hook breakout. Whoops. Uh, STNG, nothing of any great consequence here. There's no real reversal signal. I would probably be trading something else, just nothing there. GSM, 
Same scenario. If you're long, it has to open positive tomorrow. KBR, that I'd be more apt to be buying uh, on positive trading. Your J hook pattern in progress. And this one has to open positive. If it opens uh, weaker, you want to close out that out that position. G O N G. This one uh, has to open positive to stay in it. If you're in it, it shouldn't. I wouldn't be in it right now because once it broke this and then came back and and uh, told us they weren't breaking out. That was time to get out. You can always get back in if you start seeing that J-hook pattern uh, setting up. Cuervo, this one didn't close below the T-line, but it told you once we got up here where it was coming back to. So if you close it out, get ready to go long. If you're long, stay long. Just use the T-line as your stop. How to find exhaustion candles in a downtrend? Oh. I usually, uh, MK, I usually scan for the biggest percent move, uh, and you can do it by also doing it, the biggest percent move in stocks that are trading below stochastics of 20 or already in a oversold position, and they've had another big down day. Oh, Rich, retype your question. Did I miss it? Uh, retype your question, uh, Rich. I'll get to it. Whoops. You guys. Looks like it's starting to slowly come back up. You've broken this downtrend. You stay long, but it needs to stay above the T-line. D-Y-G-R. Uh, I would want to see, if I was going to buy this, I'd put a buy stop above today's high, telling me that it's broken out through this downtrending channel. I want to see strength before coming into something. A-X-D. A X P is American Express. I don't know what A X D is. American Express, and eh, not a very exciting stock. If you like it, you can Costco. Ah, Costco. I wouldn't be long or short. Absolutely no direction. A X D X. You can be buying this one, uh, cup and handle. Just be aware of what it does once it gets to the 50. We did Tyson. We did Carr. SRPT. Another one, you stay long. Just watch to see what it does once it does gets to the, once it gets to the 50. Advanced micro, nice J-hook pattern. You stay long, I'm pretty sure there's big volume on advanced micro. M-A-C-K, just stay long. Use today's low as your stop. It shouldn't come back through that direction. Says Children's Palace, another one where you can stay long. Notice all the indecision right here in this area, and then they've told you what their decision is. They're still taking it up in this 45-degree. Uh, Hawk needs a little bit more energy. At this point, I wouldn't be long yet. Oh, any shorts? Probably going to look at uh, travel centers. You could probably short that for a good 15, 20% more to the downside. Mankind, 
Trading down, all right. Where would you put your stop on Hertz? Uh, at the T line. If if it traded uh, lower tomorrow and came down through today's low, more than likely that's where the T line is going to be tomorrow. I'd put my stop right here at these lows. It shouldn't come back through that level. Whatever stock you're trading, if you're in an uptrend and closing, oh, I thought, oh, we were looking at that. If it's in an uptrend and it closes below the T line, uh, are there times when you stay in and wait to see if it bounces off the 20? No, because you're still taking a chance. I'm trying to think of. Uh, uh, uh. The only time I'm trying to think of something that I give it an extra, see if I can find it. The only time I might give it another day is if you've got a pattern and you've got a steady uptrend and it closed down here, knowing that you're, you're, you've had a strong uptrend, my next criteria would be it has to open positive and trade positive. If it opened lower, then you close out the position. So I don't care to see whether it's going to come back to the 20 because the T line is a very strong indicator of whether you're in a downtrend or an uptrend. So the 20 usually doesn't mean anything. At what point or area should you be looking to buy the J-hook pattern, assuming you're buying, you're buying and anticipating it's breaking out? There's two places you can buy it. One, on the aggressive basis, that you might start buying it right in here when you start seeing a good, strong buy signal, anticipating it's going to come up to this level. Then you see whether it gets through that level. If it fails, then you know you have a double top, you should be out. Or, more conservatively, but less profitability, is you can buy it on a day when it breaks out. So it's up to you. If you can see the pattern setting up, you know at least where your first target's going to be. Uh, when you do your scans, I understand you look at the most change in the percentage, not in the price. You look at the most, yes, biggest percent move. Where is the lower percentage when looking at results that you would not consider? Where is the lower percentage? Oh, what happens, Frank, is you can set up your scan to look for the biggest percent price moves that occurred that day. And you can even be refining it a little bit more. You can look for the biggest percent price move in stocks that are trading with stochastics below 20. So what you've found is stocks that are in the oversold area now showing a big percent price move to the upside. So the percent move doesn't really matter. What you're looking for is something that may have been setting up a nice, uh, uh, a nice uh, reversal. So it doesn't matter whether this was up 3% or 30%. It's just telling me there's a nice uh, pattern there, or a nice reversal pattern. Um, so there's no percent. But so what will happen is you're starting with the biggest percent move and you're just seeing whether that was a nice reversal or not. And so I, when I do that, starting with the biggest percent move today, I start going down the list, which you can do if, if your eyes are accustomed to looking for patterns and signals. You can go through 30 charts in a minute, let's say a minute and a half, and usually in the first 30 that had the biggest percent price move, you're going to come up with three, five, seven, eight, ten that are potentially good candlestick reversal signals. What do you usually do if price blows by your stops? They shouldn't blow by your stops. If you've got a stop in, it should hit your stops. I mean, that's what the stops are for. If you're sitting there watching and it goes down through your stops, did you get out of it? That meant you missed 
putting the trade in or putting your stop in quick enough. When on the day it breaks out, do you buy immediately in the morning or how long do you wait? No, today was buying this immediately because if it opened positive today and especially gapped up, what was that telling us about this pattern? That it was breaking out. We wanted to be buying. Yes, don't use a stop limit. Use a stop. The difference between a stop limit and a stop is when you put in a, a stop, let's say, let's say I bought this today and then I put my stop right here at today's open, which was 1072. And so my stop says if it comes down and trades below or at 1072, turn that into a market order. So if it comes down and hits 1072, it becomes a market order. Might mean I get out at 1070 or 1069. If you put in a, a stop limit that says if it hits 1072, sell it at 1072 and not any other price, which means if somebody comes in and the last trade was 1073 and the next trade was 1070 going through your stop, you had a stop limit. That means they couldn't sell it at 10.72 because the next trade was at 10.70. You still own it even though it's still going down. What if you have a candlestick sell signal right before earnings, but there are revisions which are very good percentage of being very good? Kevin, now you're speculating on a what if. Remember. Candlestick signals are the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling uh, during a particular time frame. That means they're all making their decisions with the information they have. So if you're getting a sell signal right before earnings, that means probably the smart money is getting out because they probably know a lot more than we do. So if you get a sell signal, the probability is pretty good. It's time to get to get out. Do you cherry pick the best from the list of your daily stock? How do you cherry pick? Uh, you look at uh, you look at seeing what what has the best chart pattern or signal. Now, DDD has a nice chart pattern, a bobble, and what did it do today? It did your best friend signal. We know the best friend signal is a very strong signal, and we know what the results of a J hook pattern, so the probabilities are that not only will this be in an uptrend, but in a very strong uptrend. Versus something, ooh, let me see if I can find something that would, might not be as dynamic. No, nope, no, nope, that was a nice slow curve breakout. Uh, all right, so. If I was watching this, uh, uh, yeah, I'm I'm getting ready. But if this this opens or trades positive, I could be a buyer. If it gaps up tomorrow, I'd be a buyer immediately because that tells me exactly what's happening. I've got uh, yes, your eyeballs are your best scanners. Okay, all right. Let's call it a night. Right now, the probabilities are that we're still in an uptrend because they haven't been able to get through the T-line. So with that, oh, I kept you way over time. Everybody have a good evening. We will see you bright and early tomorrow morning.